You've been asking about this video for so long, the comparison between the DJI Action 4, the Insta360 Ace Pro and the GoPro Hero 12. And finally, I got time to make this video for you. So let the battle begins. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel. I'm Photorabs, I do videos about photography, filmmaking, camera tech related reviews, unboxings, action cams, vlogging kits and so on. If you're interested in these topics, I highly appreciate if you go subscribe to my channel, that's a massive help. And in today's video, I'm going to compare these three action cameras, the DJI Action 4 that was released on August the 2nd, 2023, the GoPro Hero 12 that was released on September 2023 and the Insta360 Ace Pro that was just released about two weeks ago so let's dive in. In this video I will cover almost all the aspects of these three action cameras but of course if I forgot something feel free to write it down in the comment section below so I try to cover it up in another video and feel free also to jump into the section that you are mostly interested in I will leave the timestamps in the description below. These three cameras are action cameras, so they are robust, solid and very rugged. I haven't tried to drop them. Last year when I had the DJI Action 3, I dropped it many times. I didn't have any scratches on the camera nor on the lens cover, so they feel really premium. Comparing the weight, the DJI Action 4 is the lightest one, 145 grams. The GoPro is in the middle, 154 grams, while the Insta360 Ace Pro is the heaviest one and the bulkiest one at 180 grams so if you see the design of the three cameras you can see clearly that the Insta360 is a mix between the DJI Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12 except of the flip up screen which is a great feature especially for vloggers. So the point in this section goes for the DJI Action 4 being the smallest and the lightest camera. Let's compare also the back LCD screens on these three cameras. The DJI Action 4 has the smallest LCD screen of 2.25 inches. We have a 2.27 inches on the GoPro Hero 12 and we have 2.4 inches on the Insta360 Ace Pro. So the winner in this category is the Insta360 Ace Pro. At 4K, the DJI Action 4 and the Insta360 Ace Pro, they have the exact same pixel size, while we have a small pixel size on the GoPro Hero 12. We know also that on the Insta360, we can go up to 8K and that can be achieved by using the pixel binning technique. So I believe that in this category, we have a tie between the DJI and the Insta360 Ace Pro. These three action cameras are also marketed for vloggers and content creators, so the minimum focusing distance is very important. We have 30 cm minimum focusing distance on the GoPro Hero 12, we have 40 cm on the Insta360 Ace Pro and 40 cm on the DJI Action 4, so in this category the point goes to the GoPro Hero 12. If you want to see only the spec sheets of these three cameras, the point goes directly to the GoPro Hero 12 because we have an aperture of f2.5 while we have an aperture of f2.6 on the Insta360 Ace Pro and 2.8 on the DJI Action 4. But the sensor size on the GoPro is about 47% smaller than the sensor size on the Insta360 Ace Pro and the DJI Action 4. That means that on the Insta360 Ace Pro we have the widest aperture compared to the sensor size and all the other aspects of the cameras. So the point goes to the Insta360 Ace Pro in the lens aperture category. These are action cameras and they are also marketed towards content creators and vloggers. They all have several FOV modes. So I really like how we have these different modes on these cameras. We can go from the warp to ultra wide and the difference between one camera and another is not very significant. So for me, it's a tie between all of these three cameras, the DJI Action 4, the Insta360 Ace Pro and the GoPro Hero 12. This is a vlog test. I'm recording in 4K 25 frames per second with these three cameras. 
The GoPro is on Linear Plus, the Insta360 on the D-Warp and the DJI Action 4 on D-Warp. Everything is set to auto, the exposure is auto, the white balance is auto. Let me know what you think about the image quality of these three cameras. Let me know what do you think about the audio quality. I'm recording also externally on the Holy Land Lark Max. I'm recording internally on this microphone, but I'm switching between the audio coming out from the three cameras, the GoPro, the Insta360 and the DJI Action 4. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. Personally, I prefer the look of the DJI Action 4 in such conditions maybe because we have the lock profile that means that I can match the colors between my other cameras whether the Fujifilm or the Nikon camera or the Sony camera because I have the lock profile I don't like a lot the look of the GoPro for me it's too digital and the look of the Insta360 is nice but we don't have the log so if we would not like to color grade the footages later on then the Insta360 is great the DJI Action 4 for me is maybe because I'm used to it let me know what you think about that I'm trying to move a little bit between the shadow and the highlighted area so let me know what you think about the image quality as well as the sound quality coming out from these three cameras in the comment section below this is an audio comparison between the internal mics of the DJI Action 4 the Insta360 Ace Pro and the GoPro Hero 12 on the Insta360 Ace Pro we have some very clever feature concerning the microphone we have a focused microphone towards the speaker in this case it's me and I tried it before and it's great it's really interesting we have a little wind around and some breeze from time to time so let me know how these three cameras sound whether you prefer the DJI Action 4, the Insta360 Ace Pro or the GoPro Hero 12 so in this category the point goes to the Insta360 Ace Pro and the DJI Action 4 and not to the GoPro Hero 12 I like a lot the look on the DJI Action 4 and on the Insta360 Ace Pro so we have a tie and the GoPro is far behind in my opinion let me know what you think about that in the comment section below and now in these low light conditions I'm shooting always in 4k 25 frames per second on the DJI on the Insta360 and on the GoPro I can see clearly that the GoPro is pitch black on the front screen while the Insta360 and the DJI they both look very good but in this category the point will go to the Insta360 Ace Pro because it has the AI chip that helps a lot in reducing the noise in the footages I've been enjoying this feature a lot in my night videos with this camera compared to the DJI they both have the same sensor size so they both should uh, work the same way but the AI chip on the Insta360 is a big win for the Insta360 camera over the DJI Action 4. Nowadays the fast charging feature must be very common not only on action cameras but on all the other cameras but the GoPro does not have it at all yet on their cameras so we have a tie between the Insta360 Ace Pro and the DJI Action 4 even if I always recommend you to have multiple batteries for your action cameras but having the fast charging technique is really helpful on the Insta360 Ace Pro we can go from 0 to 80% in 22 minutes if we use the proper charger while on the DJI Action 4 we can go from 0 to 80% in only 18 minutes so it's a slight difference between these two but I think we have a tie between the DJI and the Insta360 Ace Pro I realized the battery drain test on these three cameras in my home studio at about 19 to 20 degrees Celsius the batteries were charged 100% I was shooting in 4k 25 frames per second normal stab on the back LCD was off on the cameras and I got 126 minutes of runtime on the DJI Action 4 111 on the GoPro Hero 12 and only 99 minutes on the Insta360 Ace Pro these are the results that I got in my home studio this is not a scientific test I believe that you might have some other values let me know what do you think about that in the comment section below 
and I think there is no need to do an overheat test because these are action cameras mainly they should be used outdoors with some airflow around and here in France the temperatures outside are below zero now so it's not necessary to do this test outdoor I might do it maybe on the spring season or in the summer season if you're interested let me know that in the comment section below and the point in this category goes for the DJI Action 4 for being on for about 126 minutes much longer than the other cameras the file size on the GoPro Hero 12 is the smallest compared to the other cameras and I tried to transfer the data from the cameras to my phone and it was very fast on all of these three the applications whether the Mimo app for the DJI, the Quick app for the GoPro or the Insta360 app for the Insta360 Ace Pro are very well done and very well thought so I really like that so in this category the point goes to the GoPro because it has the smallest file sizes In this section let us talk about the new features of these cameras on the DJI Action 4 we can remove now the selfie stick on the application but it's only available in 2.7k and not in 4k we can use the USB-C to plug any external microphone which is a great feature on this camera we have the 10-bit D-Log M recording which is great and also we have the low light enhancement mode which is very interesting on the DJI Action 4 on the GoPro Hero 12 we have the HDR mode that's available in almost all the resolutions and all the frame rates. We have also the max lens mode that I don't have but it's a great feature on this camera. We can shoot in 10 bit lock profile on this camera. We have the 4K 360 horizon lock on the GoPro Hero 12 that we don't have on the DJI Action 4 and we have the Bluetooth capabilities. Now we can record the audio via Bluetooth whether with the earbuds or a Bluetooth microphone and we can get the audio directly on this camera. By the way, the DJI Mic 2 does not pair with the GoPro Hero 12. I don't know why. And now we can shoot an 8x7 ratio because the sensor is an 8x7 ratio sensor and we can reframe our shot later on whether horizontally or vertically and that's a huge improvement on the GoPro that we saw on the GoPro Hero 11 and now we have it also on the GoPro. On the Insta360 Ace Pro we have lots of new and cool features. We have the HDR up to 30 frames per second, we have the clarity zoom, we have the flip up screen for vlogs, we have the pure view mode, we have the selfie stick removal, we have the 4K 360 horizon lock via the application which is an amazing feature. We have a 5 nanometer AI chip built in this camera so we can achieve great denoising process with this camera in low light. This is an amazing feature of course. We have the AI warp, we have the AI highlights on this camera, we have the Bluetooth capabilities, we can connect microphones via Bluetooth to the Insta360 Ace Pro. By the way the DJI Mic 2 works with this camera and it did not work with the GoPro Hero 12. We have also the start and post recording. We can continue recording on a previously recorded file on this camera that we cannot achieve on any other cameras before. On the Insta360, we have also the gesture control and the voice control. We have the free frame mode, which is almost the same as the mode, the 8x7 ratio mode on the GoPro Hero 12. We can shoot now, we can reframe later, whether horizontally or vertically. For the Insta360 Ace Pro, we can buy separately the GPS preview remote, which is not only a GPS or a preview remote but we can use it to control the camera to visualize the screen the footages and we can use it as the GPS connected to the camera because none of these cameras have GPS built in so we have the GPS now with the Insta360 Ace Pro via the GPS preview remote and that's a great feature for about 150 US dollars you can get it it's an extra money to pay on but it's really worth the money and I think in this category the point goes easily to the Insta360 Ace Pro. We have lots of AI features, we have lots of new and very innovative features on the Insta360 Ace Pro that we do not have on the DJI nor on the GoPro Hero 12. I've been using the DJI Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12 since they were released and I recently got the Insta360 Ace Pro so let us talk about my user experience with these three cameras. I noted that the menu on the GoPro is not very easy to access, very easy to understand and very easy to use and the screen is not very responsive so in this category I will not consider at all the GoPro Hero 12, the point will not go at all to the GoPro. 
let's talk about the DJI and the Insta360. On the DJI Action 4 and on the GoPro Hero 12, we have removable lens covers that we do not have on the Insta360 Ace Pro. But to be honest, I never scratched any of my lens covers on all my action cameras. And Insta360, they offered after the purchase of this camera one year of free replacement of the lens cover. We should only pay for the shipping. That should be around 10 US dollars. And if you would like to buy a lens replacement for the GoPro Hero 12, that will cost us about 20 US dollars, by the way. So the Insta360 does not have a removable lens cover compared to the other cameras. And by the way, the menus on the DJI Action 4 and the Insta360 are somehow very similar. The screens are very responsive. So I've been enjoying using these two cameras a lot compared to the GoPro Hero 12 that was not responsive at all. The menu on the Insta360 is somehow the mix between the DJI Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12 but in a good way that's something that I really like. The flip up screen on the Insta360 is amazing for vloggers but I wish we had a front screen here that can we can visualize the footages like on the DJI and the GoPro because there are some moments where we would like to film ourselves where we would like to vlog and we are in some harsh conditions and we don't like to keep the screen open so it's not feasible with this Insta360 if you do not have the GPS preview remote. So the point in this category will go to the DJI Action 4 because we have this amazing touch front screen that we do not have on the Insta360 even if we have the flip up screen. But I think for me it's very important now to have a front touch screen other than the back side screen. These are the 13 tests that I've conducted with these three cameras. The DJI Action 4 ends with 7 points, the GoPro Hero 12 ends with 3 points, while the Insta360 Ace Pro ends with 8 points. So the winner in this comparison is the Insta360 Ace Pro with 8 points and 7 points for the DJI Action 4. So I cannot say it's a huge win for the Insta360 over the DJI Action 4. But in my opinion, in the way I use these cameras, the Insta360 wins over the DJI Action 4. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, share and subscribe. That's a massive help for my channel. Check the affiliate links. I have lots of promo codes, lots of good deals about photography and videography products that I've talked about previously on my channel. You can even buy these cameras through my affiliate links and that's a massive help also. And by the way, now you can be a member and a supporter for less than two euros per month. And that's a great help for my channel. And thank you for watching. See you on another video. Ciao for now.